I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I was on, sorry. I was on mute. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Welcome to one of the first meetings of many workshops of many that we'll be having this summer for parents and caregivers. Today we have Nurse Javelin Letsam, and she will be talking to us about the first six weeks after giving birth. So hope you enjoy it. Yes, Ms. Letsam. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad that you all are able to make it today. Uh, so I just find out that this is the first seminars of all right for the summer something like that um can you okay though i hear a lot of background sound yeah i'm gonna try to mute people okay okay so let me try it again can you hear me Yes, okay. Awesome, awesome. So, um, again, my name is uh, Javelin Latsam, and um, I am uh, grateful for this opportunity to be able to share some information uh, with you all regarding postpartum hormonal changes. Um, I do hope that uh, this will be able to help each one of you understand a little bit better about the women's body um, and its changes after uh, the after delivering a child. So uh, a little bit of introduction on um, I've been a nurse since 1987. So you can do the calculation. And um, for the last 20 something years, I've been a triage nurse. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that I know everything and or can answer every question uh, that you may have. Um, so um, this presentation is also not in depth knowledge of information, but more of a practical knowledge that I think everyone should know, especially uh, females who are going through pregnancy, childbirth process, and then a few weeks after. Um, I mentioned the other uh, people as well, because it may be your spouse, your partner, uh, your caregivers, or anyone who is dealing uh, with or encountering this postpartum uh, situation. So um, to talk about these uh, female hormones, let's just go uh, overview all the other hormones from before the pregnancy, because um, all the hormones that we have in our body carries on all the way through pregnancy and after birth. Some of them are new ones that's popping up, um, you know, and m most of them are the one that's rising and go going up and going down, depending on the uh, phase or the time of um, uh, of the month or uh, stages of pregnancy. Um, I would like to see if I can change my screen here. Hold on one second. All right. Okay, so uh, here are the topics that we will be um discussing well the first one will for now it will be the hormonal changes um and then later on we will have about mother's self-care and then infant care um so talking about female hormones okay um hang on one second here my screen just moves all the way down Okay, here we go. Um, I, oh, 
I'm just wondering what sound is that clicking sound? Is that a message for me to? No, it's when somebody joins, it just does the bus saying that somebody just joined. Okay. Uh, just stop me anywhere if there's anything I need to know because I think my uh, screen is limited to what I can see, um, you know, from um, like uh, whoever. Yeah, the thumbnails are very limited as for right now, but just um, say something to me. All right. So it, uh, here is the uh, list of uh, female hormones. Oh my gosh. Sorry, this thing jumps up again. Um, all right, so there are several female hormones. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring that up. So um, follicle stimulating hormones, that is always in our body, including the luteinizing harm hormones, estrogen, as you know, uh, there's a, too many estrogens here that's talking about women. And then um, the progesterone. Uh, these are the major uh, hormones um, or chemicals in our body that stimulates uh, and regulate the activity of organs involved in the menstrual uh, cycle, which we know approximately within 28 days that's theoretically, some people have exactly 28 days, some people may have a little bit earlier or even longer. Uh, so during that, uh, so say, I'll say right now the 28 days, during that 28 days, um, the female body, I, I, I prefer to, is there any male attending the, the seminar or are we all women here? I think, okay, anyway. Huh? I think we're all women. Okay, I would just call us so. for hour, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. So um, uh, during that 28 days, there are uh, four um, or three different phases that our body goes through to get to the point of uh, periods or uh, ovulation or fertilization, okay? So uh, those phases are follicular, follicular phase, which is actually follicle or fo uh, yeah, follicle is the eggs and the shells itself. And then the ovulation phase and then luteal phase. All right, so, um, you know, as, as we commonly or, yeah, commonly ask, when we go to see a doctor for any kind of checkup, you know, they'll ask, when was the first day of your last period? Uh, I know some women get frustrated when asked that because uh, most of us, I mean, for me, I do not track uh, my uh, period dates. Uh, but these days, they have many different kind of option of apps uh, to keep track of our periods. And that is very, very important. Um, and so now talking about the first two hormones, which is the, uh, follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone, they kind of, uh, go along together. Uh, it's released from the brain traveling throughout the bloodstream and then heading to our ovaries. And, um, it's expected that when happened, it stimulates the production of 15 to 20 follicles and hoping that it follicles carries eggs. Okay. Um, the follicles is actually like the bag, the sack or the shells. Um, so as the production is, uh, the follicles happening, just like a switch, the estrogen turns on and these two hormones, the uh, FHS and the LH, they are uh, off. So there's like like a switch estrogen on, this is off, yeah. So um, you can, can just imagine uh, it's like, I would say kind of war in our body actually when all this is happening um, and all these are affecting 
uh, the whole body system, okay? So moving on uh, to talk about the estrogen, uh, we talked about earlier when the first two hormones, the FH, FHS and the LH is turned off, estrogen comes on, um, it helps with the uh, production and the maturity of the eggs, okay? Uh, now, normally there's only one, or I would say a few eggs that will carry on to maturity. Uh, remember we talked about earlier about 15, 20 of follicles are being, being produced at one time, but only a few that are going into the process of maturity. But there's gonna be only one normally that comes to uh, develop into maturity to be ready uh, to be fertilized. And uh, I'm not talking about twins here because I think that's another uh, story. Uh, we'll just talk about one uh, single pregnancy. So um, we know that these ovulation periods goes on for about uh, the 14 days or like in the middle of the, um, of the period. And it's a very short, short days, okay? Um, I know even though they say that the uh, fertilization can happen within three to five days, uh, but no one actually kind of know exactly when that fertilization happened. All right, so let me see if I can move on my... Um, screen here. Okay. Moving on to the pregnancy hormone. Sorry about this. I have to keep switching on the uh, screen. Okay. Um, so we talk about ovulation and now we're talking about the uh, last stage or phase of uh, the, <clears throat> sorry, uh, of that 28 days. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Uh, during the this phase, the follicles uh, becomes empty. Okay, so ovulation is when it's really mature, when the egg is really mature, it gets fed out of the ovaries into the fallopian tube. Um, and you can look at uh, pictures of the women reproductive system. Okay? And when it's uh, thrown or sped out to the fallopian tube, this follicle becomes empty. And that empty follicles, uh, it's called, the science name of it is corpus luteum. It, it, even though it's empty, it has nothing in it, but it holds a very important um, function in our body as things goes on now to this phase of luteal phase. Um, so hopefully, you know, when in sexual intercourse happen, when that uh, one egg, one dominant egg, the mature egg uh, is ready, um, the uh, sperm, the strongest sperm will come and meet that egg and become fertilized. And at that time, the empty um, uh, corpus luteum, the, the empty follicles, uh, produces progesterone, okay? Every little phase of a uh, change in this situation, uh, there is hormones that is working to help all this uh, process moving. So um, when that empty follicles uh, releases progesterone, it helps uh, to prepare the uterus lining to be ready for the fertilized egg, uh, egg to come and implant itself in the uterine lining, in the inside uh, lining. So, um, skipping to the side, if it if that egg, that one mature dominant egg, is not fertilized, then what's going to happen? 
the inner lining sheds and that's when our period comes. But now, because we're talking about pregnancy, um, the egg will travel from fallopian tube and normally will come into the uterus and implant itself in the uh, uterus uh, lining. There's going to be other things that could happen in the fallopian tube where, you know, some uh, disorder where uh, the fertilized eggs implant, egg implant itself in the fallopian tube. Again, that's another uh, situation or condition. We're only talking right now about the no, uh, normal process of uh, pregnancy. Okay, uh, so the progesterone hormone stays or stay raised um, up in our body for a good ten weeks. Okay, it steadily rises, and we expect it to be that way uh, because like I said in the, uh, earlier, that it helps the, um, the inner lining of the uterus to uh, stay healthy, in, uh, nutri uh, give nutrition to the embryo uh, itself, okay? So, so far at this, uh, up to this point, can you just imagine what our body is going through, okay? Um, even though it's only estrogen and progesterone right now that has been like a changing in the amount, um, you know, in the level, that also has helped uh, or influenced our emotions, okay? Um, can talk about that a little bit, I will talk about that a little bit more uh, towards the end of how it influenced uh, our emotions, psychological situation, those kind of things. So, no matter what, well, when this happens, we are going through a lot of changes, okay? And no one alive in this world can ever deny this. Um, you know, at times it's very difficult to understand. And each, each person is going to uh, experience it in a different way, uh, even though it's the same progesterone, the same estrogen, you know, um, that is changing in our body, but each person responds um, to it in a different way, okay? Even from uh, one person, I have uh, two pregnancies, and um, each pregnancy is different, you know? I don't know um, how how you go um, if you've been pregnant, um, what your experience is uh, in its pregnancy. Sometimes you say it's nothing like the previous one. So I don't understand. It's like every every time we just learn about something new um, happening to our body, even though it is with the same uh, chemicals or the same hormones um, going around in our body. All right, so now, after um, after ten weeks uh, of the pregnancy, there's a handout process. Let me see if I can go here. Okay, there's a, a handout process. Okay, um, the progesterone is now going to be uh, produced. Uh, to the placenta or by the placenta. And now it changed its name to HCG and HCS. HCG is human chorionic gonadotropin. HCS is human chorionic somatomammotropin. I think one that is very common for us to hear is the HCG, okay? Because when we go to see um, OBGYN, uh, checking about the pregnancy, they'll say, uh, oh, can you order HCG, okay? Uh, this HCG can be secreted in the urine. So the first one that people will uh, ask is the pregnancy test via urine, and that will only tell us if you are positive or negative of the HCG, which is the pregnancy hormone, um, but there's another one 
um, of the test called beta HCG, uh, which is uh, done check uh, from the blood and it counts the amount of the HCG in our body, okay? So after eight days of fertilization, the HCG starts to rise. It's uh, again in the circulatory system. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it releases in the urine. Um, and well, the one that's released in the urine, you can check it through a home pregnancy test, okay? And um, some people can check it a bit earlier before they miss their period, but the highest it is will be uh, eight days after, or one week after we missed our period. Again, this is counting on the 28 days of uh, period time, period cycle, basically. So, um, so when uh, this progesterone, uh, okay, so HCG and HCS is part of the progesterone, uh, it will peak for the first two to three months. And then it um, slightly kind of going down, but then stay stable. Okay, it also helps with uh, to maintain the pregnancy. All these hormones are helpful, but the level of it and every stage or every phase is different because it is um, it has its own function. Now, um, as okay, uh, talking a little bit about the HCS, we also have that from the beginning of the pregnancy. What it does, as you see the word there, MAMO, you know, uh, I think it's common for us to know what MAMO is. It, it, it's saying to um, keep the health and uh, maintain the health or a stimulating uh, kind of breast, milk duct, all those kind of things. This is what its function as the pregnancy progresses this is also rising okay uh but not as fast it is very uh slow in the beginning but it is progressing or uh rising basically okay um the hcs is actually released from the placenta so until the placenta is built, uh, which is pretty immediate, and that's around seven to eight weeks of pregnancy where you can uh, really see the placenta is already attached to the uh, uterus, this hormone started to be released. Um, and sometimes you can see, uh, not every woman experience a little bit of spotting between that seven to eight weeks. Again, that is when the implantation happened, uh, like there's a little scrape from the uh, urine wall, basically. All right. Um, so a few function of this whole three um, progesterone uh, right now is relaxes and uh, relaxes the smooth muscles, okay? This is very important to the womb at this point because normally as uh, our uh, our uterus or our womb recognize there's something foreign in there, it starts to contract. And that's why we have discharge, those kind of things. It's like to find clean itself out. Um, so once an, a fetus is, uh, a fetus, sorry, an embryo being implanted in there, it is, um, uh, expected that the body to recognize hey this is a foreign body it's a different dna uh, you know what is why is it in here the uh normal reaction is to contract to squeeze it out okay because again like we talked about earlier that it needs to clean itself out but with the rise of the progesterone in our body it helps to strengthen uh, the, the health, the environment of the uterus, uh, trying to keep that uh, embryo uh, in the process until implantation and to the end of the pregnancy. So uh, again, this uh, 
progesterone helps to relax the muscles of the uterus, okay? So that it'd be like a happy, happy place for the, uh, for the embryo and healthy. Um, it helps with the, by our body immune system uh, to tolerate this foreign DNA, which is the fetus. Uh, with that said, uh, you know, our body has a lot of uh, smooth muscles, for instance, like the blood vessels. And um, with this, it can lower our blood pressure. Um, so that's why in the beginning of pregnancy, sometimes you feel like lightheadedness. Uh, that is expected, again, because everything seems to be slowed down, relaxed. And so it causes you to have nausea, vomiting, heartburn, belching, and then possible constipation because, again, our uh, gut system is made of smooth muscles. That's why it slows down uh, the gut system. So you have all these um, heartburn feeling, reflux, belching, and or constipation. Um, to the other good side of that, it helps hair growth. Uh, nail grows faster than usual, and as maybe you have experienced it or you've heard other people say that, hey, my hair grows very nicely during pregnancy and after pregnancy, what happened? Just falls off. My nails, ooh, they grow very fast, you know, and healthy and strong, thicker. So those are the works of the um, progesterone, okay? Uh, let me see here, switch. Okay, estrogen. Estrogen is another um, uh, uh, hormone during pregnancy that um, was also released from the corpus luteum, you know, the follicle, the empty um, eggshell that we talked about earlier, uh, not as much as at that time in the beginning, such as progesterone, but at this point when the progesterone coming down and start to um, stay stable, stable or plateau, it says uh, the estrogen rises. Why? Because, again, this is all happening in the first 12 weeks or first trimester, it triggers the growth of several organs uh for the fetus and uh body system nervous system all those kind of things um and uh, one important thing also is the uh adrenal gland okay um and on top of that the same it helps with the mother mother's uh uterus and uh also towards the end uh this estrogen will en uh, enable the body to release or uh, respond to another hormone called oxytocin. We'll talk about that in a little bit. <clears throat> so when when estrogen happens, uh, usually uh, when, I'm sorry, when estrogen rises, and usually this is going into the second uh, uh, trimester, you will notice that, um, you know, spider veins starts to pop up. Some have nausea, still continue to have nausea. Um, amazingly, you know, after 12 weeks is 12 weeks is done from the nausea and vomiting, um, wake up one day, you notice like you have the whole appetite. That is when the rise of this estrogen is just boom right there. And then you want to eat, you want to eat, <laughs> and um, which is a good thing. Now you are uh, eating for two actually, and you will notice the skin also start to change. And that's when we, um, or a lot of people say, oh, she has the pregnancy glow because the skin starts to uh, to shine and uh, looks very uh, bright, you know. Um, it's, it's amazing. Um, I know at, at times I think that, hmm, maybe I should just have that continue on, not changing time or phase actually, all right. So um, the next hormone uh, is relaxin. Uh, this is still part of uh, estrogen um, that, I'm sorry, is still part of the uh, estrogen hormones, okay? We do have relaxin in, in a days that we 
or not pregnant, uh, but during pregnancy, it rises 10 times uh, of its normal um, level. And um, again, this is happening between the first trimester and also the beginning of uh, labor time until delivery is done. Okay, the function of relaxin is uh, loosen the ligaments that hold the pelvic bones together and it relaxes the uterine muscles uh, and helps to expand the uterus. Um, it also prepared the birth canal to be flexible. Okay, so just remember when it's loosened and relaxed, just from the name itself, relax, it relaxes, it, uh, it's flexible to all the uh, organs getting ready for the baby to pass through. And when this rises, it um, towards the end of the pregnancy, it wakes up the oxytocin, okay? Uh, we talked a little bit about the oxytocin er, earlier. So during this uh, time when the relaxin is higher in your uh, uh, in your body, um, we notice that you start having the uh, okay. Th so the main function to, we talked about earlier is to loosen the ligament, especially the pelvic bones area. Okay, so that it can expand as as the baby grows bigger, our pelvic uh, uh, bone or floor also widens actually. And um, that also, uh, unfortunately, uh, relaxes or expands our other joints. And that's why at times you can get uh, back ache um, and joint ache, um, you know. So that, that's the negative part uh, to this. But it has a, you know, good function uh, to keep the pregnancy. Now we move on to the uh, oxytocin. Uh, I, some some people say I don't know if heard if you heard about this that uh, oxytocin is the love hormone. Okay, um, when uh, so when you cuddle with somebody or when you have that feeling of happy uh, being with somebody, it re uh, oxytocin is being released from uh, from our brain actually, and so. Uh, it, that's why it's commonly called the love hormone. And during the pregnancy, when oxytocin is much more released into um, the circula circulatory system, it triggers labor. Okay, it is sending a message: uh, we are ready, and so a pelvic floor expands. You know, smooth and widen the cervix. Uh, baby, hopefully the baby will turn her <laughs> head down uh, already and ready to slide out. Um, the oxytocin uh, in the beginning of the process of active labor, uh, there is a uh, one hormone that is related to ox oxytocin called prostaglandins. Okay, um, it it really helps. Uh, like to, to make the uterus contract, okay? And this is when we uh, contraction happens. With Braxton, Braxton Hicks, um, you feel this a little bit, but it's just like, um, when I learned about Braxton Hicks, it reminds me of like aftermath of uh, earthquake. Uh, that's kind of weird, but uh, because it's just like, you know, it's just like very lightly, you know? Um, but when it's uh, when real or true labor, true contraction happens for labor, it contracts, stay for a while there, and then it releases. When that happens, it's trying, um, not trying, but it helps the baby moves down, you know, like squeezing it bit by bit, not like psh, all at once, okay, bit by bit. So, um, and again, uh, this uh, oxytocin, like we talked about earlier, it, it, it stretches the cervix. And then afterwards, it's just not going to go away right away. Um, remember, we talked about it's the love hormone. So um, it stays for a, a little bit to help um, mothers 
to bond with the baby after the baby uh, uh, is out, basically. Uh, so it stays for a little bit, and then there's going to be another hormone that helps with all that uh, uh, process uh, continuing bonding with the baby. Okay. Uh, the next one will be prolactin. Okay, uh, this is, uh, I don't know if you're, if you know about this, but this is the hormones that um, helps our body to produce milk. Okay, um, it, it increases steadily during the third trimester and then it surge after delivery. Remember, progesterone drop down, estrogen kind of uh, there, but not there. And then oxytocin uh, is there, again, starting to, to go away. But then uh, the prolactin just surge, you know, because realizing that, hey, um, we're ready to feed the baby, uh, okay? So, um, so as as long as the mom continues uh breastfeeding or gives stimulations to the breast uh breastfeeding or pumping the prolactin level stays uh pretty much high uh continuously okay um but when you uh, stop uh stimulation to the breast or pumping um this uh, prolactin will just slowly decreasing and go down and then it will go away okay um yeah i'm thinking about other things I want to talk about prolactin but uh, i'll just so is later. that why we lose weight when we, we start gaining weight back after we stop breastfeeding well is, is the work of the extra member estrogen is still there so you your body kind of real we, we talk about the appetite drive uh, because of the work of the uh, of the estrogen, yes, uh, prolactin is part of it, and therefore, when um, your body realizes that you need to to have this production or milk production, yes, you will want to eat more. But again, um, to answer your question, it can be yes or no. Uh, depending on your uh, genetic drive as well, you know, uh, some people can just go whoops, like nothing, <laughs> like they've never been pregnant, uh, you know, before, just went back to their pre-pregnancy weight. But for some, um, like me, I kept it, you know, and plus with the um, uh, food that I'm eating more and then less of a movement, you know, trying to uh think of taking care of the kids of the baby then it just stays but so does that answer your question though so now i was thinking the opposite because most people when you're breastfeeding you're smaller but as soon as you stop breastfeeding you put back on all the weight so i didn't know if that hormone had anything to do with it uh not really again it is uh losing weight keeping weight it's depending on your genetic uh, drive and also your uh physical uh activities actually um so yeah all right um okay so we are moving on to the next here so learning and getting to know all of these hormones we have in our body you know um uh, it's like now what right our body has gone through many things many changes basically um <clears throat> from the last period you know that that 28 days uh phase until uh pregnancy you know the body changes um uh, the emotional changes the last thing is reality changes okay um and it is not only you who are experiencing this your spouse your partner and there's other um 
uh, family members or if you have other children. Uh, and amazingly, people who live in the same household uh, with you, they are going through uh, some changes as well. Uh, it may not be recognized, but it is there. Okay, so actually the main focus of uh, our seminar today is at this stage, you know, is now what? All right, um, baby is out and now I am here. There's another individual attached to me, which is 100% dependent on me. And then I, my body is still healing. You know, uh, there's so many things that uh, goes through our mind that we need to focus. Not only that, um, our spouses, uh, our partners, um, our other children, you know, and as a mother, uh, if you already have previous children, you've got to take care of them as well. Okay. Your body drains emotionally, drains physically, um, you're, you're, you're tired, fatigue, uh, lack of sleep is one of them, uh, because here you have to feed the baby every so often. Uh, change the baby every so often, and uh, we do hope that uh, you have, um, you know, family support um, um, or from around you, or you know, I don't know, neighbors or whoever you know who you can get to help you with this. Okay. Um, now with. Look at this. I found pictures of a uh, hormonal graph. <laughs> if we can choose one to understand what is what, but that is what really going on in my mind when uh, I was learning about the um, hormone changes in our body at every different stage or phase. Okay. Uh, men, men's um, hormone graph would be very nice and clean. Uh, but us, look at this, different different ways, different shapes, you know. Uh, so, um, it changes. Look at that. Um, this is a very nice, perfect picture, actually. Uh, but I know sometimes our hips get bigger, legs, ankles swollen, hands swollen, face swollen, you know. Um, I'm glad in this picture they show the hair there. I like the the hair. Um, and then the uh, the mom there carrying the baby at the end, you know, she has just the perfect body. I'm jealous of that. She has a little bit of belly showing compared to the uh, first picture uh, on the left, okay? So, um, as we know, researchers have found that um, experiences of anxiety and uh, mood impairments during pregnancy can increase a, a woman's um, risk for experiencing postpartum related depression after delivery. And um, we cannot deny that each uh, every mother, every new mother uh, will go through this, okay? Uh, if there's a treatment needed, a woman can increase her chance to uh, remain well throughout her pregnancy as well as her, her ability uh, to cope with everything that uh, has changed in her body and emotional, you know, those kind of things um, and adjust uh, to her baby as well, to her spouse, to uh, the other children uh, uh, that has been there or other family members. And uh, <clears throat> a mixed feelings comes into this, right? Uh, we feel happy, we feel love, we feel joy, you know, uh, having a newborn. And at the same time, we can feel suddenly like 
helplessness, we feel sadness, we feel anxiety, so many things coming to our mind, um, you know, like, am I going to be a good mother? Uh, am I fit? Will I be able to uh, fulfill these little person's need who is 100% dependent on me, um, you know, social, uh, first physically, and then uh, psychologically, and then socially, you know, uh, because you do want to take the baby with the um, other family members, friends, those kind of things. Um, all these mix up feelings of joy and to the uh, opposite of that is like scared and sad, you know. <clears throat> So, so many um, things that we have in our mind that we need to focus on, okay? Um, well, we haven't even talked about the job here, you know, if you have a job, some, some uh, women do not have a postpartum uh, off, you know, they have to go back uh, to work and there's another stressor there uh, to add, but I know majority of, uh, of us, I don't know, should I say majority? Um, we do have that six, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, postpartum or um, maternity leave, okay? Uh, whether it's a week, two weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, you know, depending on what your, um, uh, your coverage is or what your capability is, you know? Uh, so much drastic changes um, and all of this usually happens or uh, bom bombarded us, overwhelm us in that first two weeks after delivery. Okay, and these uh, two weeks, the first two weeks is very, very crucial, right? Uh, you've heard about baby blues, um, mood swings. You know, sometimes you just suddenly want to cry, and you're with the baby, baby's cooing, and you feel suddenly sad, and you're crying. You know, um, a lot of times it's um, that we can understand that, but it it happens. So uh, that's why I said this first two weeks is very crucial. Um, each person or uh, each mother need to recognize that each spouse, each partner, um, or if you have other adults living with you, uh, aunts, uncles, uh, parents, parents-in-laws, you know, they need to recognize that, okay? Um, because if you don't um, recognize it and you do not take care of it, it cannot be managed and can easily slip into what we call postpartum depression, okay? So um, let uh, I have a let's see here. All right. See, uh, this is a graph that I found uh, regarding emotional roller coaster of pregnancy. You know, from the beginning, it's like, oh, I'm so excited. Or to some people who does not want to get pregnant, it's like, oh, what are we gonna do? You know, so many mixed emotions, um, and then also. Um, towards the end here, I, I don't know if you've heard a story about a mom, uh, you know, um, to identify a mom when uh, she's ready for labor, she will clean like crazy, okay? Like suddenly you have this ADD uh, or or uh, compulsive, uh, obsessive, uh, what's that? Um, ob obsessive compulsive, you know, you can stand anything dirty everything has to be in place you know uh again yeah. th th that is uh work uh of the hormones okay uh and like uh, preparing what are called nesting preparing uh yourself and surrounding you to be ready for the uh the new baby to come okay so um well we talk about that a little bit earlier Relative changes and um, all right. So here's um, things that I would like to share. I think if you forget 
what are our hormones and what they do. This is one thing that I do not want any of us to forget um, so we can understand ourselves and help others uh, who are going uh, through this uh, postpartum phase, okay? If your mood swings go beyond two weeks or new symptoms develop over the next few months after delivery, what you do? Contact your regular provider. Um, I know a lot of people, oh, it's okay, you're just a new mother, you know. Yes, it's true, but it is okay to connect or contact your regular provider to tell what you're feeling, what is going on. And they can say what? Oh, that's normal. It is okay. You're still within your normal uh, limits or range, basically. Uh, feeling depressed. We talk about so many emotions going on. Uh, feeling depressed that lasts more than a day or two. Okay. One day, a bit is okay. Here and there is okay. But if it is becoming uh, consistent over a two days period, a lot of time after, past that time, it is very difficult for you to go back to normal. Well, I'm sorry, uh, go back to where when you were not depressed. Okay. Um, so, uh, a few did I hear anyone wants to ask a question or something? Just remind me, it's about three minutes left, two to three minutes left. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. We're, we're, we're there, we're there. All right, so um, the symptoms that um, of depression is decreased interest in usual activities or lack of enjoyment, uh, decreased ability to think uh, clearly or to concentrate, feelings uh, that, uh, that you feel like you can't cope uh, being a mother, having trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, you know, uh, fatigue, loss of appetite, because usually as a new mother, uh, you really not supposed to be not having an appetite. Um, one thing, oh, I'm sorry. And then feeling of worthlessness uh, or excessive or inappropriate uh, guilt, like for some reason you just feel like you're at the wrong, okay? Here's the last but not least, Last but not least is if you develop feelings of thoughts of harming yourself or the child, like you're losing control, you're feeling so overwhelmed um, that you cannot manage or guard that feelings or thoughts, seek immediate um, professional assistant to help you. And I believe um, that there's another seminar that was tied to this. Um, to go more in depth regarding postpartum depression, uh, maybe also talking about treatment uh, and those kind of things. So um, on the next uh, seminar, I would like to talk about the body changes and uh, what we can do to the body changes us as a mother, you know, basically self care or self help. So that's, um, covers or uh, ends my uh, presentation today. Uh, I hope we have learned something about ourselves and uh, also can carry on something to help others in the community or uh, within our families as well. So thank you so much for the time. Uh, I don't know if we have any questions, specific questions, like I said, I may not know the answer, um, but we'll see. No. If anyone has any question, you could unmute your mic or use the chat. Yeah, I think no one has any questions. So thank you for your presentation today, and that's what some. And, and then, oh, one person wanted to know the roller coaster visual. Um, Will it be available? Is that something you can send to us so we can share? Um, was this recorded? No, the roller coaster visual. That um, the, I think this one. Is it this one or the one with the graph? Which one? But maybe send us graph and this one. 
This not the body type. This whole no. monogram or the roller coaster, the other one. This is Megan, the roller coaster one, the other one that shows kind of the lows and the highs. That one. Yeah. So you can take a picture of it. I think it, this is, yeah, you'll be able to see that. But we were asking is there, you can email us that slide. You can email oh, it to you and I can pass it on. Oh, I'll email it to you, Gislin. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Of course. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We like to end on time. So we'll see you at the next workshop, which is next week, Tuesday. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.